Hi there, Sugar Snaps. Welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, welcome in. My name is Brittany. I'm super glad to have you. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. So if you are new here just now, I usually do tutorials in fiber arts, basket weaving, and textile arts. But today I'm going to do a video, kind of a spin along. So I'm going to spin some yarn and I'm going to do this video in real time. So a little bit of editing, um, but mostly real time me spinning my yarn. I might talk a little bit, but uh, you can spin along with me, grab your mug of whatever is delicious to you at the moment. I have some decaf coffee here and I'm going to be spinning up this wool yarn. No, not wool yarn. I'm going to be spinning up this wool that I dyed in last week's video. This is a uh, hand-painted BFL roving that I did in teal, royal blue, and burgundy. And so I ended up with lots of purples and blues. So I'm going to spin this up in a, I think a two-ply yarn on my Ashford Kiwi. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you want to spin along with me, go get something to sip on, coffee, tea, even a glass of wine, all is welcome. And let's do some spinning. It's getting near the holidays. I celebrate Christmas and so we are busy working away at preparing for the festivities later this week. Oops, I need to take this off. So I, um, yeah, doing some cooking. Oops. Some cooking, some cleaning. My husband and I are hosting uh, some extended family for a Christmas dinner. So we're preparing for that. And we decided we wanted a large table that would fit everybody, which is about 14 to 16 people. And uh, we decided to build it. So we are in the process of building a table from scratch. We got some large rough cut cedar planks that we're doing the tabletop out of. And then uh, we re got some reclaimed wood to build the legs and the rest of the table from. And, oh gosh, talking and setting up my wheel. It's just phew, rough go. Okay, let me get this set up. Uh, okay, that's that. Good, good. Yeah, so we have the, the cedar planks for the tabletop and some reclaim wood for the legs and we're building that. We have the tabletop all glued sitting down in the living room and um, the legs we cut to the right size or the pieces to the right size, sanded them down and now we are waiting for the glue to dry and today we'll do the sanding of the tabletop. Okay, so I'm gonna stop really quick and I'm going to spin this along the colorway that naturally happened here. So I ended up with the one end is lots of teals and royal blues and it went into kind of purples and blues. So I'm going to follow that natural progression starting at this end. Oh, this is a short length. Spin from the purple side to the blue side, just kind of naturally. And then when I go to ply it, they'll get plied probably opposite, so blue and purple will be beside each other like that. I think that will look pretty. I think I'm going to make a hat out of this. BFL or Blueface Lester wool is nice and soft, and so I think it will make a nice, warm, cozy hat without being too itchy. So I'm going to open this up and break it in half so that I know about the length or so both lengths are about the same. I think there's a better way to calculate this out, how to get half and half, but or get the uh, weight of yarn that you want. But I'm just gonna do it this way. 
Okay, so this piece I'll do second, and these pieces are my first pieces. So I'm gonna start with this piece first. And I like spinning my singles in a clockwise direction and then plying in a counterclockwise direction. And when I do that regularly, just by muscle memory, it means that um, it's always the same. And so I don't have to really ever think about it. I just know I spin in one direction and I ply in the other direction. I got this nice orifice hook from a place in North Carolina. It is blacksmith. So I think this is probably cast iron or something. And then they did a gold filigree over the leaf here. So it just kind of has a tint to it. It's rather pretty. Okay, when I went to dry this after I had washed it, um, or washed out all the excess dye, I kind of opened it up a bit so that it would dry faster. And so I've done some fluffing already, but I'm gonna go through here and fluff this out even more so that it's just easier to draft off of. And I'm going to do a short draft, short draw, so forward pulling, drafting on the, um, to make my yarn. If you don't know what that means, that's okay. I'll probably have a video on how to do that in the future. Man, lots of cool colors. Got some good ocean blues and purples, deep stormy colors. I did um, a couple, about a month or two ago, I did some art yarn and somebody in the comments left a really cute name for describing the colors and the texture of the yarn. I'll have to look back and see what it is because it like described it perfectly. So if I finish this yarn and you have a suggestion for a name, please leave it in the comments because naming my colors is not always my strong suit. Okay, let's get this show on the road. Gotta check my tension. spinning recently been doing a lot more basket weaving and it's always nice to get back into one of the crafts when I've taken a break from it because especially spinning it's so relaxing you can just sit back and spin and let your mind wander or think through a problem or just kind of enjoy the rest and the peace I gotta get calibrated. I'm a little, blah, blah, blah. I forgot I have this orifice hook. Yeah, I need to up my, let's do this hook.
guess today is bulkier yarn day. <laughs> It's funny how sometimes your muscle memory and your hands, your body just wants to do something different than normal. Normally I spin a pretty fine yarn or pretty fine single. And today it just looks like I'm <laughs> set to a little bit bulkier, more of a worsted weight. So I didn't pre-draft my fiber, so it's still kind of stiff. And it didn't felt in the dyeing process, but it's still, the fibers are a little bit tangled together, so it's a harder to draft than normal. think that the sound of the spinning wheel is so soothing. It just kind of click clacks around and around. It's a little hypnotic. Thing about spinning is that it can be super easy to sit here and spin and spin and spin for just an undefined amount of time because it's so calming and just kind of relaxing and easy to get into the rhythm and kind of lose yourself in the motions. I hurt my shoulder about a year ago, um, had an overuse injury from doing craft and uh, my massage therapist and um, chiropractor and my naturopath all have told me that I need to take breaks and stretch things out, which is kind of common sense, but I have a tendency to get into what I'm doing and just kind of do it for hours and hours. And so they suggested taking a break about every 20 minutes or so because uh, apparently your body gets used to a certain shape and it starts to take on that shape and kind of when you spin sometimes it's easy to hunch over 
and that shape isn't really great for your body. So um, they suggest stopping and taking a break and doing a chest opener. And if you know any yoga, doing any kind of stretches like that. Um, so I've been trying to incorporate that practice into my work and what I'm creating because it's no fun to have an injury because you were doing something you loved. So I think today I'm going to stop every couple minutes. I don't have a timer, so I don't know how long the breaks are gonna be. But I'm gonna stop and do some stretches every once in a while. Feel free to do them along with me. I'll kind of talk through what I'm doing. I don't have any um, like professional training in yoga, just have taken some classes here and there. So don't take it as exercise advice or any of what I say as medical advice because I'm not a doctor. I just know what I've experienced, which is that taking care of your body is super important to be able to continue doing what you love to do. peppermint candle burning over here and it smells so minty and refreshing peppermint i think is one of those essential oils that's supposed to improve mood or energy and i like having peppermint in the studio especially this time of year because it's a very festive scent here in washington state this time of year is pretty gray and rainy just sort of starts raining in October and doesn't really stop until March. <laughs> and so we just get a lot of gray days, a couple sunny days. We had some sun last week, but not a whole lot of vitamin D. And so we do all the things we can to, for mood boosting. <laughs> Maybe you've heard of seasonal affective disorder or SAD. It's a, I don't know the technical definition, like the medical definition, but um, the way I feel it is just feeling kind of tired and like I want to hibernate through the winter because it's colder and grayer and so more melancholy, or I feel more melancholy than usual. And then summer hits and it's like, all the energy, the sun's out so much activity and people are friendlier and happier when you go out and about. Mm, I'm loving these colors going into the yarn of this wool. Oh, I need to switch my hook. Just have some deep, deep purpley burgundy here where the burgundy dye mixed with the blue. For some reason, I look at this yarn and I'm thinking of Peter Pan, the book. Not, not so much the movie, but the book Peter Pan, all the magical creatures and the lagoon. Face Lester has a nice sheen to it. It took the colors of the dye really nicely, and I'm really enjoying this texture because it's kind of toothy, has that, that typical, stereotypical wool kind of roughness to it, but in a soft way. And so it has a, a toothy wool feel, but a nice silkiness to the way it looks and kind of a sheen in the colors. So sort of like a, a sateen fabric has a bit of a sheen to it. The blue face Lester has 
just a slight sheen to it. It's not shiny, but it just catches the light a little bit more than other wools do. Well, friends, I am not making a very beautiful bobbin at the moment, but that's okay. tradition my family started last year for the Christmas holiday with my extended family was to do a progressive dinner. So we start at my brother and sister-in-law's house and it kind of changes up. We've This is only the second year so it might change up in the future but um, we all recently moved to the same town or most of us moved to the same town and so uh, last year we had all ended up kind of in new houses we'd all moved and everybody wanted to tour the houses and come see our new spaces so we started this progressive dinner and it turned out so well that we decided to do it again this year so this year we'll start at my brother and sister-in-law's house and do um, hors d'oeuvres and some little little drink type things and spend some time there they have a a lab, a chocolate lab named Lenny. So we'll get to play with Lenny. And then we will go to come here to my house and we're gonna do dinner here in our living dining room area on that table I was telling you about, hopefully, if it's done. Um, yeah, so we have the downstairs all decorated for the holidays. And then from here, after dinner, we'll go to my parents' house, my parent and my other sister's house. And they are going to have some, um, some home brews. They brew beer and some wines, and we're going to open presents. We did a, we're doing a gift exchange that's like a name draw, so everybody got one name, and we're doing food-themed gifts, so, uh, like favorite, uh, just a theme. The theme is food, so some sort of gift revolving around food. And so we're going to exchange gifts there, spend some time there, and then go to my aunt's house that lives, uh, she lives not far away from there. And we will have dessert at her house. Uh, and she has two dogs as well, so we'll get to hang out with them. And my my parents and my sister have two cats. They're my sister's cats, but yeah, I'm pretty excited. And my little nephew, Matthew, will be there. Uh, he's He just turned one, so he was born a couple days after Thanksgiving. So I'm excited to see him. We don't see him very often. So I'm excited to see him and He's getting into the phase where he knows what the camera is and he poses and smiles and uh, you say cheese and he scrunches up his face with a big smile. That's super cute. So I'm excited to see him and my sister and brother-in-law. They're coming over across the state to see us. So what, what are some traditions or new traditions that you do with your family? I'd love to hear in the comments. I'm always interested to hear what other folks do for the holidays, if you have traditions and 
if not, that's totally fine. Doing new things every year is great too. Having holidays with friends or with family, whatever works for your lifestyle. One of the reasons I love the Christmas holidays is that it's kind of right in the middle of all of the gray raininess here in Washington. And yeah, it just kind of cheers things up a little bit. Like in the Chronicles of Narnia, they talk about always winter, but never Christmas. It'd be kind of sad if we didn't have the Christmas holiday. I'd be sad. I know not everyone celebrates Christmas, and if that is you, totally want to make sure you know you're welcome here too. for a stretch break. I don't know how long it's been, but I've spun quite a bit here. So I'm gonna take a break, wind this on to the side here. And I think if I stand up, you're not gonna be able to see my head. But I'm gonna come over here. I'm just gonna do a forward fold, which is folding over, touching your toes. I'm gonna stretch out my back and my legs. And if you, if you tilt your head down and you try to look up at your belly button, you get an even deeper stretch. And then you can roll up. We'll do a little, I'm gonna move this over and sit on the floor so you can see me. Do a little heart opener. So put your thumbs back, open your chest. shoulder. Don't forget to breathe. And switch sides, left hand to right knee, put your right hand back, look over your right shoulder. Deep breath in and out. Back to center, get out of it. back to your spinning and know that your body's just kind of reset and not scrunched up through all of this wool in my time, but we'll keep spinning it up and maybe I'll do another video showing the fly. Thank you. 
starting to zone out over here. that first piece so I'm going to grab this other part and I think I'm going to break this in half 
just so that I have a little bit less to work with or to draft off of. And I'll open it up a bit, kind of fluff the fibers so that they're not stuck together. to draw back and forth off of this roving so that I stay in the same color section until that color is gone. So I'm just kind of pulling, zigzagging across the end of the roving, catching all those fibers. And some of the fibers from the other colors are pulling up along with it, which is okay.
to a few places.
my face. Got rid of the squeak. has a nice squish to it. It kind of is squishy and bouncy. And that toothiness of the Blue Face Bicester with the smooth texture. It's almost as smooth as a merino, which is one of the finest wools to spin on. And the, the finest uh, wool fabric you can buy. meaning it's comfortable next to the skin because it's not scratchy. Start yawning, that's a good time to take a good stretch break. <laughs> down into like cactus arms or goal post. <laughs> okay, and then stretch forward. Roll your shoulders. this section and then take a pause look it over
Okay. I'm gonna pause there. I still have another, the other half of that bit of the roving to do and then the whole other section to do on a second bobbin. But I think I'm gonna take a break from spinning for now, if not today. And I will show you the finished yarn in a future video. So if you want to see the finished product, be sure to check back to future videos. If you are here at this point in the video, thanks so much for following along. I hope you got some good spinning done or basket weaving or whatever it is you're working on. I um, last night was watching somebody's video while knitting and was really enjoying watching um, Well Loved, the Well Loved Knits channel, uh, Bethany is behind that channel and yeah it was fun knitting along with her as she was working on her project and i was working on a little jacket for a teddy bear so um yeah i hope you enjoyed this if you like this style of video please leave a comment in the description below and like this video because it just lets me know um that this is a good type of content to create again in the future and yeah, if you're new here, subscribe and hit the bell to get notified whenever I put out a new video. Like I said in the intro, this isn't my typical video format. Usually I do a tutorial or a vlog style video, but I'm experimenting with some new things. Going into the new, new year, I want to explore some different type of videos as well as more types of content. So I'm going to dive into some knitting content and of course continue with basket weaving and natural dyeing and the dyeing and spinning all those kinds of things so if there's something that you want to see specifically leave a comment below and i'll do my best to fit that into my content creation plan and yeah again thanks for spinning along with me or whatever it was you were doing and i will catch you in the next video thanks for watching see you next time bye